been a lot of amazing fights where our very talented animators show off their skills, their patience and their cutthroat determination for quality. And there's no better way to display that than by showcasing fights where such animator flex can be seen the most, hand to hand combat. We're just a few years into the new decade but here we go, my top 10 hand to hand fights in anime so far. First up is Yujiro vs Kakukayo. It's been a good while since Barky felt like he had a social media presence and I think that that's too bad. There was once a time a couple of years ago when these martial arts shows seemed to be hitting their stride and one leading the charge is none other than this continuation to the decently popular childhood series, well if you're a 90s kid like me that is. And if you need one clip to show you how awesome Barky can be and what it's all about, you can feast your eyes on this fight between Yujiro and Gaku Gaio. The show's just as wild as you'd have guessed by seeing this fight. It's over the top, it's really violent and has all sorts of twists and turns that you'll only really see in anime. It also helps that this fight pits two of the strongest characters in the show. Gaio may have gotten destroyed when it's all said and done but you can't say that he didn't put on a good showing for Yujiro and the fans for that matter. <laughs> The next contender is Shuichi and Claire vs Hikawa. Gleipnir had the benefit of running smoothly over the course of a season ravaged by production delays. All eyes were on this niche title and with a spotlight on it, it shone brightly and made a statement that season. And that's largely thanks to this attention grabbing fight that happened early on. Gleipnir is all about making first impressions with its dark atmosphere, surprisingly amazing fight choreography and a plot that grips you hard and keeps you watching. True to form, the strongest part of the Gleipnir anime is in the first half with its engaging end goals and the fights that people compare to the big guns. No one expected a banger like this from Pine Jam but we can all tell that there was much love put into this adaptation. The fighting was fast and furious and it quickly established what our heroes are all about. It's no nonsense and that's the beauty of it. That makes it a good compliment for the atmosphere the show's going for. <laughs> Brawler vs Executioner is also a nice little fight in a title that rose out of nowhere. Akudama Drive, in contrast, took quite a longer time to make its mark. It's got a good atmosphere and quickly set the tone for what it wants to do. However, it took a while to come into its own, and I bet a large part of its late rally into popularity were the escalation of stakes coupled with amazing fights like this. It's a similar case with Gleipnir, now that I think about it actually. Amongst the high octane fights it had, one conflict that stood out to me was Brawler vs Executioner. It's a fight that the animation team perfectly nailed, and it really captured the intense, stylish action that became Akudama Drive claim to fame. While it started out involving swords, the two of them quickly got into it and let their fists do the talking. The rain and the music only added to the atmosphere and you quickly get sucked in thinking this is some climactic fight that just caps off a series. But it is only halfway through the series and there's still so much more to come from Akudama Drive. Vivi vs Yugo is next on the list. Vivi though had some momentum with it right from the get go. It helps that it's attached to one of the community's most beloved authors being the brainchild of the fan favourite ReZero author. It does feel quite strange to see him take the dive into sci-fi but whatever because it really worked out so well in the end. And don't forget the fights. <laughs> The fights, man. I like the series primarily for its themes and its overall production quality and pacing. Everything looks so good. So when you put in that level of quality with this fast paced fighting, then you know only good things are going to happen. The fight has a lot of emotional weight behind it and it's simply a gift to anime fans with the fast and furious fighting, the crisp animation and the music that adds so much to the scene. Sound direction is something that people often overlook in terms of evaluating fights and I just think that it does so well in complementing this one. Going from a solemn set of tunes to the crescendo and an abrupt and decisive end where the fight scene reaches its tipping point, it's a beautiful thing to witness. BB's more than just fights though, but if I manage to get you interested through this showcase then I'll be more than glad. Valhalla vs Tokyo Manji gives us some of the best that Tokyo Revengers has to offer. <laughs> 
What good would a show be about gangs without some of the most adrenaline pumping fights where the people go down and dirty and just beating the hell out of each other? This encounter from Tokyo Revengers pretty much tells us what the show has in the bag as far as action sequences go. It's not every day we get to see the multi-man rumble in anime, so this conflict has that extra big fight feel stemming from episodes of build up and hype. When we get to the actual action, it's great, it's wild, chaotic, and intense in all the good ways. All that you'd expect from gang warfare done well is here, and it's got some insane moments that became some of the most memorable scenes that the show gave us. I'm pretty sure Mikey, already a popular character, earned himself a lot more fans following this fight and his performance in it. Jin versus Davey is up next. As an adaptation, God of High School is polarizing to say the least. There's a lot of things that could have been worked on in terms of the pacing, the cut content, and the overall flow of the story as seen in the anime. Still, it did maintain a pretty solid fan base throughout its run, because at the end of the day, it still does one thing excellently to keep people hooked and that's its fight. The team never skimmed in showing the awesome fights and their spectacles in themselves. Jin vs Davey is one of my favourite amongst the bunch. In addition to being an excellent fight between people who have history, it also served to further their character arcs. Some of the best stories are told in the fights and as much as I talked down on how God of High School paced itself a while ago, I can't help but feel goosebumps watching this fight unfold and how it affected both combatants. Giving mad props to the anime team for making the fight more and more exciting as it goes on to be honest. I really love the touch they did towards the end with shifting the art style mid-fight. Makes you feel the increase in tension and it ended up being a good indicator that the climax was coming. Here's an old face to shake things up now. Naruto shines in his battle against Ishiki. <laughs> Naruto's battle against Ishiki, the one with Baryon mode, is more known for how hard it hit Naruto fans' hearts. It's got a lot of implications to the story and it serves as a perfect swan song for a much beloved character. Everyone's so caught up in the awesome supernatural things happening, but what I'd like to focus our attention on is the physical combat bit of this scene. Because in true Boruto fashion, the anime team completely knocks it out of the park in key events involving the legacy characters. You can feel the power in every blow Naruto delivered each one serving as ample payback for the previous fight he had with Ishiki. And the two shake things up by involving other moves in their arsenal for the hand-to-hand -hand combat part, and those were all beautifully animated for us to enjoy. They also mix it up with the magic powers, but at its core, this confrontation is a splendid display of hand-to-hand -hand prowess. It's definitely not what most people remember out of Naruto as a franchise. I mean, hey, for every one cool daijutsu moment, we have a dozen moments of insane overpowered displays of magic. But the fight still serves as a heart-pounding reminder of the versatility of the franchise in terms of writing and executing fights without feeling too repetitive. Schwan versus Wrath is here and we head towards the end. Remember how I was raving about Chinese anime stepping up? Well, Here's another sample. Fog Hill has some of the best combat scenes I've seen in the past few years. Fog Hill did have a short run. I mean, it barely qualifies in the traditional definition of a TV anime with its episode count, and I guess it serves more as a short OVA or a movie cut into several episodes. In spite of its short length, though, you can tell that the team didn't half-ass this project, and it's got so much to like if we're talking about fights. The bridge fight was good, but this one-on-one -on -one encounter between two fighters has got everything that you'd want from a fight. Tension, eye-popping animation to pair with the fighters' movements across the battlefield, and some excellent voice acting to top it off as well. It's the climax any viewer would dream of. The cool thing about this is that Fog Hill was actually made by a small team, so it's not inaccurate to say that literally a dozen people animated this spectacle, but here we are. A lot of love for the craft as well as skill and effort all come together, and the results, they're really just spectacular. Speaking of niche anime though, here's Oya and the masked outcast duking it out. If you're on a masterclass in terms of animation, then this 
is the fight for you. The great thing about bare handed combat is that it allows so much fluid motion. With the fighters getting so up and personal with each other, there's just so many opportunities to lose yourself in the flurry of blows and the swift dance that the combatants do. This fight from Hitori no Shita is simply insane if you take those things into mind. And it's definitely not those static images standing around which the arms fly in all directions type of thing. This is probably the most dynamic fight I've featured so far, featuring a lot of full body movement, a lot of martial arts moves, and simple direction that makes things a lot faster and more intense than you're actually expecting it to be. I have featured this fight before, but if you've only started watching this channel, here's a tidbit for you. The one behind the choreography of this fight is the one behind Naruto and Sasuke versus Momoshiki. Really awesome connections that you think, especially since we featured a Boruto fight featuring Naruto just a while ago. Yeah. Lastly, we finish off with one of the best moments from Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji and Todo versus Hanami. Take the previous fight, right, with its sleek motion and fast and furious fighting. Then add a bigger budget, more character elements at play, and some top-notch directing, and then you end up with this fight right here. Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot of awesome fights, and this one is likely to be the one people will remember the first season for. I mean, can you blame them for it? It's just awesome. You gotta love how Yuji and Todo's chemistry gets showed. And as I've said before, this fight is the true testament, the fruit of their friendly, spar and growing relationship that's been built up in the previous episodes. Incorporating supernatural powers with hand-to-hand -hand fighting has always looked so good, but when you add context to the scene, it drives my appreciation for this battle up a notch. We also get a great finish and yet another memorable Gojo moment towards the end of this fight. But I think it's best to leave that for another day. For now, just feast your eyes on peak shonen fighting, courtesy of the newest pillar in the ever-growing history of action shonen. And that's it for my top hand-to-hand -hand fights for the years 2020 to 2023. If you've got something more to share, then the floor is yours. Before I leave, gotta say thank you so much for watching. So stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you next time.